Kirin in Malta, a place I have never been but have always wanted to go. Sounds really exotic, Malta. I just, wow, that's, I think, isn't that off the coast of Africa or part of Af some, somewhere near Spain and Africa? See, here I am, <laughs> the ignorant, uh, geographically ignorant American, but I think it's, that's where it is. It sounds sunny. So I, it, it, we're recording this in the winter, so that sounds pretty good to me. Anyway, hi, Paul. I love your videos. Keep them coming. I will do my best, sir. Uh, there seems to be a lot online recently on sound panels, acoustic treatment and placement of the same. What I'd like to ask is why would I want to diffuse sound waves? W why would I want to scatter them randomly throughout my listening room? Uh, why also would I want to absorb them at different locations? And why would I want to interpret the sound waves or interrupt the sound waves at all? Great question. Okay. Don't you love these FR30s? Oh, sorry. A little, a little plug. All right, so what, let's start with why we would want to do anything at all. Well, part of the problem in stereo systems is this, the room, okay? The room is our friend and the room is our enemy. Why would that be? Well, first off, let's start from the very beginning. If I take these speakers and I put them out in the backyard and play them, they're, unless I'm sitting very close to them, they're not gonna sound very good. These speakers and every speaker that you have were designed to work in room. In fact, we publish in-room responses because in the room, the response is very different. It's different because we have walls where the sound reflects off. When this speaker makes music, it comes out in a wave. And depending on the frequency, the lower frequencies have long, long wavelengths. And those wavelengths of pressure, sound pressure, go out and they hit the walls and then they bounce back out of time to us who are listening in our chairs, okay? So we want the room to reinforce some of those frequencies, but it's that old double-edged sword business. While we want those reinforcements, we also don't want those out of time delays that happen. Because if you can imagine, let's just take the mid-range here. This nice 10 inch mid-range goes down to, gosh, I don't know, a couple hundred, couple hundred hertz, right? Well, this mid-range is really critical. And what you want is to be able to get direct sound from the mid-range to the listener. But that's not gonna happen. Why? Because of these walls. So when it goes out and it hits the distance from here to the wall, back over here to the listener is longer, greater than the distance from here directly to the listener. And that difference, because sound takes time to travel, is going to make it delayed. So your ear is hearing the direct sound and a little bit later, the same thing, distorted in time and distorted in response because all of a sudden now I have this, this wall that is changing the way the, the sound reaches me, the timing, and actually the tonal balance is different. As, just listen, listen to my voice as I walk up towards the wall. Do you notice that what happens? As I get closer to the wall, my voice is changing, right? It's changing a lot. And the same thing happens to all sound that comes near a wall. It gets changed forever, delayed in time, and sent back. What can we do about that? Well, we can absorb it. So if I talk into it, this is, I think that's once, if I talk in there, that's, so this, this panel, by the way, it's called a room tune. This has one side that is reflective. So as I talk, you hear it kind of reflects. And if I turn it over this way, then it, uh, it, you see how it is, sounds dead, right? So this is the dead side. So yeah, I could line my walls with all this deadness and then have a dead wall. Well, unfortunately, as I mentioned before, we count on the reflectivity of the wall at some frequencies to have it sound right. So if you made this room totally dead, 
the sound would be dead. It would sound dead. I, I know that sounds trite, but it's true. So sometimes what we do is we'll deaden the back wall and we'll keep this, the, the wall behind the speakers, uh, acoustically alive. But what we can do, and this is where diffusion comes in, is use a diffuser. Now a diffuser has all these little ribs in there and as sound hits it, it scatters and confuses the sound so that when it reaches your ear, it is not correlated by your brain as being the same as the direct sound. And so your brain ignores it. And that's how we get this nice spacious sound. So it's a way of tricking our brains into ignoring the delayed and acoustically altered sound bouncing off the walls. And that is why we diffuse. And that's why I prefer diffusion to absorption in general. Okay? Great question. Thanks for asking it. I'll talk to you tomorrow.